is family. This would be uh, when I see the pictures and everything kind of flashback is family and it puts a smile on my face because I really loved everybody on that bus and especially the 16 who aren't here. I think about them every day and I think about everybody on the bus. And so to see these videos, these photos and old memories just feels like family. Seeing Hunter Sully, his hands up in the air and uh, with a little grin on his face, like that's exactly how he was. And lots of these little things that you see in these photos really resemble their character and how they carried themselves. And so when you look back at it, you see different memories. One of the ones was a picture of Stephen Wack. It was his video, actually. And it was Stephen Wack sitting in the chair in Nashville, my billet's dining room. And uh, it was at my Clements, and I was the one who actually videoed it. It was kind of cool that it was in his last video he ever made. So it's these little memories that you see that you're part of and you always will remember and cherish. I think losing one person in your life at the age I was as 20 is a lot, let alone losing two is quite a bit, but losing 16 is unfathomable. And there's really no words to describe it. Um, you could try to use heartbroken and scared, sad, emotional, but those really don't equate to the feelings that it is to lose 16. And so I had survivor's guilt for the first couple days, just being like, this doesn't make sense. Like, why am I still here as a 20 year old when there's a 16 year old on the bus who passed away or Darcy, our head coach who has a family back home. Like, why does this even make sense? So there's a lot of guilt in that, but then within that guilt, I was able to reframe it and to really change into something that was positive and to use that as, okay, well, I'm here now. I want to live a life to the fullest for those who aren't here and to make the most of it. And so there's different forms of grief and people get over things at different times too. And I want to say you get over it because I'll always be scarred with it, but my scars have healed and I am comfortable talking about it now. I'm comfortable being open about it. And for me, the way I look back at it now is just being grateful that I knew those 16 that were there in my life for the time that they were. There's 8 billion people in this world and the fact that I had a relationship with these 16 who aren't here and 12 others on the bus. And I think that in life there's lots of things that happen and life is full of ups and downs and this was one of the negative points of life. But the positive was that I got to actually know these individuals and be with them every day until their last day. Honestly, that I love them, but I already knew, they already knew that before they passed away. I think the way that I carried myself throughout the season, everyone knew that I loved them by the way that I came to the rink every day, asked how they were doing, made sure that they knew that I was always there for them for support. Um, so I was really, I went to change anything differently. I went to do anything different. Um, they knew that I loved them, and so I just tell them I love them and I'm proud of them. Hopefully the same. <laughs> I think uh, I think they would definitely say the same. What we had that year was something special that you don't really get every year. And we had a dress room full of people who were full of great character and great skill. Normally as a hockey player, you have a stigma of acting tough and getting through everything. But for me, I found a lot of healing throughout being vulnerable and open. Uh, and it was also through my family, my friends, and talking to them about the things that have changed me and the things that are on my mind. Instead of keeping it, holding it in, where it gets super tight, I was able to let it out and just tell them about what I'm feeling, um, some memories I had, some good stories. Fun, we'd have 18 plus guys come over to my Billis house uh, where Stephen Wack and Bryce Fisk and I would live. and. Uh, We'd have all pile up in the basement on couches, on the floor, joking around while we're watching uh, The Bachelor. So uh, I think another thing throughout my healing journey that was really beneficial for me was focusing on things I could control. I couldn't control the semi-driver. I couldn't control the crash. I couldn't control who was here, who wasn't here. I couldn't control my injuries, even what other people were saying or thinking. What I could really control, could control was myself, my attitude and how I wanted to move forward from this. 
how do I want this to define me? How do I want to have a work ethic? Do I want this to define who I was and put sink me down? Or do I want to rise up and above and to use this as motivation to become a better person, to heal, to heal mentally, physically, and emotionally, not just a physical trauma. And so for me, I wanted to focus on things I could control. And throughout my healing journey, I think that's what helped me one of the most was being able to focus on those and blocking out the things that were out of my control and realizing that there are some answers that you may never get. So I have taken risks. I have writing a book was taking a risk and even going to school with a severe traumatic brain injury and being told you're gonna to fail was another risk. But being able to persevere through that and use it as a positive. And then the last thing was just to enjoy the grind. We all have our own grind in life, whether that's work, school, relationships, um, family, friends. There's all different kinds of grinds that we have, but to really enjoy it because life can be gone in an instant and you should enjoy every day that you are here. My name is Caleb Dahlgren and I'm enjoying the grind. I know how important this support is. Please click the link below to help support grieving children in your community today.